Well, I mean, autism awareness is not really for us. I was saying that there's an issue with us we want to move away from awareness and then obviously there's talk of acceptance now but I did note that a number of people in like the comment section were saying but I don't want people to just accept me that's like tolerating somebody kind of thing so they were talking more about you know autistic appreciation um, instead and then I remembered that David, you've spoken about autistic unity. Yeah, so I had this idea that <clears throat> we're a very diverse group of people. We have diverse opinions, diverse demographics. You know, the, 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 <clears throat> the autistic community really does represent global diversity, in my opinion. And I know sometimes that diversity causes some of us to come to blows. And it occurred to me that perhaps we needed to be pushing for people to unite and celebrate that diversity. Um, and this is, like I said in the article, right, it's not a call for people to ignore the generally, genuinely problematic areas. Um, you know, there, there are problems that need to be talked about. And I'm not saying we should just say, oh, no, we need to all unite, even if we have problematic views, because no, there, there are people who are problematic. There are opinions that are problematic but we need to unite under our diversity and celebrate that diversity um because i think once we start to unite more we can move forward from things like awareness and acceptance into being a community that is embraced by a large number of people so if we start then with our issues with what awareness is so, like, why do we as a community largely struggle with this idea of autism awareness? I think Tiggy, yeah. you've been sharing stuff as well, haven't you? They don't. I, I'm, having, I'm having a lot of issues at the moment, I must confess. And tomorrow's video might be about my thoughts on the fact that of the infighting, the, you know, even though, you know, the, you know, parents, families, individuals, that whole wealth of what's going on at the moment. And, I, and, I'm, and again, yeah, it is that month. And funnily enough, the, 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 the day designed by the World Health Organization is April the 2nd, yeah? That's actually my birthday, right? Which I've always thought was really quite cool of them to do that. Obviously, they didn't, yeah? And, it, and, it, and it, it's, just, it's just, you know, I, I, it's that whole thing about it's almost, is it reclaiming it? Is it adding our voice to it rather than having other people lead <clears throat> for us? Does that make sense, yeah? It's about, and that, that's where I think unity comes in. It's the fact that, you know, it's almost like it seems to be that other people are doing it, which I've done in the past. Yeah, other people are doing it. And therefore, it seems like the true voices are not being heard because everybody's concentrating on everybody else is doing. You know, the lighting up blue, the puzzle pieces and all the rest of it. People are seeing, still seeing an awful lot of that. And then and because of that, distracting from the voices that are there and that should be listened to. And that's why I think the idea of unity is really quite solid. But that's that's kind of, it's, it's a real mindful in my mind at the moment that the the global kind of infrastructure battles and stuff that go on between I think all the last My issue as well is so so when you see people saying which I obviously agree with and, and think we need to go further. So when you see people know saying no, we need acceptance, etc., and then there'll be people that say, well, people still don't really understand autism. So actually, we need to start with the awareness to move on to the acceptance to move on to the appreciation and so on. But my issue is, the awareness is broken, because it's not really awareness of autistic no. experience. It's awareness of the myths of autistic experience, and the myths of basically it's awareness really is kind of embedded and part and parcel of that culture of autism which is that we're a deficit we're disordered even those of us in our community who really are challenged by the environment because potentially they've got a language impairment maybe they've also got a learning disability but ultimately that that narrative of awareness is one based on things that don't really benefit the autistic community all of the autistic community not just those of us that are 
um, without a language impairment, for instance, because I see that argument quite a lot. Where it's, oh, it's all right for you. You are able to talk about your identity and have that self-awareness and things. But my argument is, if we improve the narrative in general, moving away from that pathology, that narrative will be around those autistic people who potentially can't be part and parcel of the politics of our lives, right? And ultimately humanize them. I've gone off on a weird tangent, but you know, ultimately changing that narrative to the one of autistic culture will help those who aren't able to be actively part of the community. Does that make sense? Yeah, and this is where the autistic unity thing comes in because one of the things if we if if it really took off, you know, this idea, I would really like it to celebrate the fact that <clears throat> there are non-speakers out there talking about their experiences through means other than mouth words. And they kind of get shut out by the whole awareness thing because awareness really in my opinion is for the parents specifically and I hate the phrase the martyr parents you know it's all about oh woe is me you know look how difficult life is for autistic people and, and their carers and <clears throat> then we start talking as autistic people and then they say oh well, you know you're not like my child you can communicate but actually lots of us can communicate in a very diverse number of ways and part of the autistic unity thing, you know, uniting in our diversity is that if we see people, you know, trying to communicate um, in a diverse way, we signal boost that, you know, we work together to make sure that people can't turn around and say, oh, well, you know, the people talking about it aren't anything like my children, because we are all, we, everyone in this community, there is someone who represents just about every part of this community you know that i agree awareness is not enough because the like i said the awareness is is for the parents really in my opinion and acceptance it's a great step as what autistic people would like but we do need to move beyond that and that's that's really where the unity thing comes from is you know if we've got non-speakers who are trying to communicate their experience then unite with them and boost their signal, you know, give them a better platform to talk from. Don't let the people spreading the myths talk over them and say, oh, well, you're nothing like my child because they're exactly like your child. And I don't <sighs> want to be separated from those members of our community. No, me neither. Want... This is why, obviously, we talk about the issues with functioning language and labels and things like that, because I don't need to be separated. I don't I have much more in common with the autistic individual who does potentially have a language impairment or communicates in a different way um, or doesn't communicate in a way that we can necessarily um, understand or interact with. But I have much more in common with their experience, their sensory experience of the world than I do a non-autistic person. And that's been my goal. I guess one of my biggest goals I've got numerous goals for Academy, and that's why I'm so glad I've got you two here as well. Soon we'll have a net. But my biggest goals, I guess, are to be able to enable those different voices. And obviously, when we say voices, we don't necessarily mean mouth words um, to be able to come to Acad Academy and teach. So I do want actively I'm looking to be able to support um, people who don't use mouth words. I very much want the other intersectionalities in our community. You know, I'm very aware that we're very white. You know, we need much more. Uh, we need black people on here. We need people of color on here. We, you know, and this is my ultimate goal is to keep doing that and pushing to find those um, individuals. But I'm also aware that it's difficult. It's not for want or trying of me trying to find those individuals. The difficulty is those individuals might not necessarily feel safe to be openly autistic on a public platform like ours. And that is where we need to move forward with more than acceptance, because that's just tolerating. I don't want to be tolerated, actually. Somebody said that in a comment and it was really, it's important. We need more than acceptance. We need more than tolerating those weird autistic people. 
you know um so yeah I like this idea of unity and I want yeah so we can anybody who's listening you know if if you are somebody who doesn't use mouth words if you are an autistic person of color or you know whatever background um we we I really want to hear from those people you know so perhaps really the idea of autistic unity goes further than autistic people uniting in their diversity and actually autistic unity looks like the world uniting in its diversity and so autistic people neurotypical people we're all alongside each other in in our existence and it's not about one group tolerating the other it's about being equals in this world that, that's what we're asking for isn't it? that's what we're asking for ourselves so that's what we have to do, I think, within our own area is, is, is work with, listen to, learn from people, like you said, that use other methods of, what's the, what's the fancy term? There's the alternative and augmentative communication, isn't there? The people yeah. that use things like the, the key signing or, uh, you know, iPads, pro, pro thing. I can never say properly. My apologies for pronunciation again. There's all those different areas out there. And I think that acceptance is... You know, if, 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 if we're evolving into a true community, then that's what our acceptance is about. Everybody there. And that's what it is. That's what it should be. That's what it will be. And I want to hear from those people. Their perspectives must be different to mine. And I am just, we are, I think, fair enough to say for the three of us, really interested in different perspectives. That's why it's much more about more than awareness and acceptance and things like that. It's actually <laughs> getting immersed in those different, cultures mm. and I think that's yeah I think fundamentally there's a number of autistic people that I know that will hide from social media for the month of April because they just get so distressed and I don't use that lightly they genuinely are distressed and triggered and I know we hear the word triggered quite often now but they genuinely are by seeing the well-meaning but just very superficial awareness which is using symbols that we see as hate symbols, mm. you know, you know, talking about us in a way that we find stigmatizing. Um, and it's quite difficult how, how to approach those. And should we, should we be the ones to approach the people that are? I think, yes. I don't know. Again, hey, learning Tigger, yeah? Um, over the past couple of days, because I've been sharing stuff on the various social media outlets I've got, I've been also going through what other people have done. There was the, I think I got it right and saying the British Psychological Society, I think. Um, if I got it wrong, I'm sorry. They did a post and it was a ribbon with puzzle pieces. And I rang them up. I just thought, I'm working in front of the computer. It's come up on my Facebook page. I'll just ring them up. They were lush. They said, we didn't know. We just Googled an image. And we thought that's what you do. And they didn't know, but they wanted to do something about awareness, acceptance, and then they, they, we had a little natter, set them some stuff, and they put on something with the infinity symbol. And I thought that was lush. And I've seen so many other people as that's, well do the same. That's something quite interesting. So both of you, do you feel, I know Tigger that, cause obviously you've still been around autistic people, even if you weren't understanding that you were autistic. So you must've seen these narratives and things each April <laughs> and, and, and to David as well. So. I feel there is a qualitative difference this year to yes. what's going on on social media. I, I think that there has been, maybe it's just the people I interact with, I don't know. And a lot of them are strangers, people I don't, I don't know. But I've noted something quite similar, Tigger, which is when you politely, which we shouldn't have to, but I know that it's sometimes we aren't, um, you know, aren't accepted, sadly, if our tone is not a certain way. Anyway, that's a whole other conversation. Um, but I have noted of the few people that I've interacted with to say that post is problematic and this is why. And they've apologised, they've taken it down, they've replaced it with, with something more appropriate. David, what do you think? Have you felt this? I mean, problem? I've certainly seen that a couple of times this year. Um <clears throat> Uh, as far as I'm uh, aware, Nickelodeon, after the whole debacle, was it last year, where they were signal boosting Autism Speaks? Yep. Um, they signal boosted um, ASAN this year, I think it was, um, and said, you know, thank you for being patient with us. 
Uh, so the sorry, the autistic self advocacy self advocacy Advo network. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> um, and uh, I was also quite impressed to see um, Melissa Joan Hart, who awesome. plays Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Which was a it was a wonderful moment for me because that was one of my favourite programs growing you know, up. So, but me too, me too. I saw it as well, and I thought that was really lush. Yeah, it's like yes, she listened, and you know, yeah, you know, she original... did this big thing about listening to autistic people, and then she did then when she did a she put a frame on her profile picture, and autistic people approached her and said, you know, it says the right things, but it's made by an ABA provider, and she once again she said, oh, I'm so yeah. sorry, I didn't realise, and she changed it and she said but i'm leaving the other one i'm leaving the other one up on my profile so people can read the comments and learn from the labor yeah. that you've put into educating me you know and it it was such a nice that, difference because yeah. i remember last year with the whole nickelodeon thing everyone was up in arms because nickelodeon didn't seem to want to hear any kind of criticism okay so this is interesting i do definitely feel there's a different quality this year what is it? What has happened? I know we've had lockdown, we've had the pandemic, we've also had things like Black Lives Matter. I'm not saying that it's connected at all, but I feel like there's something qualitatively different that people's people with lived experience, which I hate as a phrase, but people who are autistic, for instance, are being listened to a bit more. Why is this? What's happened? I want to be careful how I phrase this. I think having things like Black Lives Matter, you know, obviously recently we've had the Take Back the Streets um, campaign for women. I think people, especially because they've been spending a lot more time on social media reading what campaigners are saying, possibly, they, they've recognised that actually when you're talking about a particular demographic, you need to listen to the actual members of that demographic. And I th think perhaps the events of the last 12 months have pushed us in that direction. So perhaps that is something, and I, obviously I, I, I've not done any research into this. I couldn't quantitatively prove it or qualitatively prove it as such. But I suspect that whilst the events of the past 12 months have been really quite traumatic, this is perhaps some good that is coming out of it. It's the silver lining to the cloud. I, yeah, you know, I, I, agree with that. I definitely think there's a qualitative difference. Like you say, we can't measure it at this point in time. We're not doing research in it, but it just doesn't seem as combative as previous Aprils from people when you're trying to approach them and say, this is actually problematic. Maybe I'm just lucky and I haven't come across those people and maybe a bit but more militant. For, but... From my perspective, because this year's changed so much for me, um, last April, I think we just got into lockdown. So I was in like, so many people, a state of, you know, um, shock and worry and concern and so on. So this year, but this year, the people I'm now associating with, my neurokin and so on, I've been much more involved this April than ever before, I think, in seeing what's out there. Um, again, but going back over the years, the decades, I've, I've seen various stuff. I have too felt that there's a difference. Trying to think how deep I am now involved with, um, you know, looking at my new kid and so on, and, and chatting to people and learning from people and so on and so forth. But you're right. I still think that from the odd conversations that I've had running up to April and including, you know, the, the April the second and so on, people were possibly because of what you said, David, people were very much more open to, okay, sorry, what should I do? Thank you, rather than go away. And I think that, again, is a, a, a positive byproduct of, of, of the way that, that the whole of our culture changed over the past year, that we're all on this so much more and learning. Yeah, because so I got, you know, I ended up doing, I think, four or five talks in that week of autism awareness, in quotation marks, week last week. Um, I've been doing training for years, you know, so all of a sudden I was getting picked up to do these, you know, autistic acceptance. And, and again, I was telling the um, people um, who, you know, they would be putting on um, Eventbrite or whatever, a bio or a synopsis of what I was going to be talking about. And I would say, can you please not use the word awareness? Can we have the word autistic acceptance and things like this? And, you know, those people, people listening and saying, oh, yeah, OK, that makes sense. 
um, I don't know, maybe there's that, we, we're getting somewhere, which is quite, um, given like I say, April can be a really difficult month for us. Um, I think that's something quite positive to come out of that. Last I mean, April, I, I sorry. No, um, yeah, last April, I, I very much had the vibe that I was putting on my suit of armor and preparing to charge into battle. And honestly, this year kind of felt more like standing next to my comrades and celebrating our victory. Um, and that's not to say that the war is over, but I, there's certainly, there really has, I feel there has been a shift in the last 12 months. I, th I think, I think sorry, go on, Tigger. I think people are, because of the format, because of the way our communication has changed with aspects to, our, to everybody's culture over the past 12 months, I think people have been so much more open to listen. And rather than come back with a, I know what I'm doing, get lost, I saw you on the internet, it must be true, they're going, oh, okay, and what should I be? I think, I'll have a look at that, thank you. I have found, I think, and I've seen so many more organisations and people listening. And I think that's something that, I feel has dramatically changed from the years that have gone previously. It's that ability to listen. And I think your point, Tigger, that actually when we think about it, well, I mean, 12 months ago, Academy didn't exist. So, you know, the way that we are all using social media, not just autistic people, in the last 12 months, because of the lockdown, because of the pandemic, you are seeing and hearing far more autistic perspectives because I started Academy because of the lockdown, basically. Um, you've got uh, autistic young people talking about their autistic experience on TikTok. Mm. You know, you're, you're starting to see, because of social media, I think we're getting more voices out there. We need more. We need better representation, definitely, of the intersectionality and the diversity of our community. But it's a good start. It's better than the media stereotypes that we've had in some terrible um I'll, I'll tell you one thing that has been uh, quite significant this year that no one really talks about and this particular person i don't agree with everything they say because they do reference asperger's and stuff like that which i see is an outdated term um but greta thunberg or thunberg um she's really risen to the top as probably one of the most famous autistic people on the planet right now. And she is making a huge difference in so many places. And I think having, having her rise to fame over the last 12 months, I think has actually made a lot more people stop and think about who autistic, you know, what it's made people go, okay, well, this is what I thought about autistic mm. people. But look at this autistic person literally changing the world. <clears throat> and and I think presenting, um, you know, yeah. it would be nice again, a bit more diversity. Um, but but still. It, it also, she had that um, spat with a certain president as well, which I think I came out of that, you know, much more adult and much more professional, yeah. but also came out of that, I think, vocalising that her view of the planet was just what was needed. And the other uh, the, the major professionals across the globe was was sitting up and listening and taking note, and I, and so I think you're right. It raised that wow, you know. I think that was really important. I'm hoping what is starting very in small little pockets is that yeah we're moving away from that awareness idea because it really is a particular narrative. It's not the autistic narrative that people are aware of when people think of awareness it's it's very much that culture of autism um and i think what's interesting is so this morning on linkedin which i really struggle with linkedin i just don't see the point of it half the time but still somebody had posted something it was very autism speaks um it was puzzle pieces all this kind of thing and i didn't have to i'm not having to be the only or the first autistic person to comment and say this is not appropriate or an autistic ally, so a non-autistic person. I'm seeing this a lot mm. on, on um, Instagram. I was seeing adverts for um, special, uh, they're not like earplug earplugs, but like these special ones that are designed um, for autistic people. And the language was great. 
in 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 all of it and all this kind of stuff and there were some fantastic comments in the comment section from autistic and non-autistic people and I've not seen that before that many autistic people and allies who get it talking about it and saying thank you so much to the advert you know whoever was doing the advert thank you so much for using the language that is appropriate thank you so much these are actually really good these ear earplugs or whatever they were you know I've not seen that before well it's up, up until the pandemic the only textbook you get your hands on was from the library all of a sudden this is the textbook do you see what I mean the Facebook lies what Academy's done and so others that they become textbooks that professionals and individuals and families are able to access to expand their knowledge base and it's it's I do really think the different ways we start to communicate have enabled people to understand there's so much more out there than the five books the library's got. Do you know what I mean? There's so much more out there than the training, which is several years out of date. You know, that's three hours long that makes you an autism champion or something. I do know some of these autism champions that are lush, but do you know what I mean? Yeah, and I think people have realised, hey, this, this is it now. This is where we can learn in a much better way than we ever have done before, in a much more up-to-date way than we ever have done before. Or Academy needs to publish a book on autistic culture this is yes there's plans we'll do this we're going to do this together i've got so many plans i just have no spoons this is the problem i'm still autistic <laughs> but i still <laughs> struggle with my energy levels because yes. i've got so many ideas oh culture You're about yeah. culture yeah about the, and, and i was thinking that it's 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 is it another way of putting us down it's another way of disregarding our statements our viewpoints our ideas our thoughts our identity isn't it it's just another way of just saying, yeah, well, you're not that and, important. Really. And I think what was interesting, so basically I, I ended up, not, like I said, I'm not going to call the person out per se. I'm hoping they do learn from that exchange. Um, but part of what I said as well was that because they was talking about, well, there's certain, um, you know, people with autism, in quotation marks, um, who aren't part of that narrative or aren't interested in that narrative. And I hear this quite often. And um, it's what it goes back to what I said before, which is, but is it any wonder? The stigma that surrounds our experiences of the world is so great that why would you, 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 you can do one of two things. And I talk about this quite a bit when I'm writing, you can do one of two things. You can distance yourself from those other people with autism because you belong to that stigmatized group. You can distance yourself. And that's a way to psychologically, um, uh, protect yourself or you do the opposite which is known as the social cure in the non-autistic understanding of cure which is you connect even more strongly with that group because then there's that unity you've got that psychological um, connectedness to other people you've got the resources um, psychological and material so I could say I'm having a really tough time this is why and go and find another autistic person to support me and talk me through it or just the connection with people and so what I said to this person was so this this is what I said which was in ref, uh, reference to what he'd said about well some people aren't fussed about the puzzle piece and things like this or or maybe they completely reject the community and stuff like that so I said some autistic people are not in a place to embrace the positive autistic culture my point is though we will always be here whenever those people need us you know so there's not this you know you're not part of our community we're not letting you in kind of thing if that autistic person struggles with the idea of connecting with the community that's fine but we will still be here for them they're still technically part of our community um so they might not be in a place to embrace the positive autistic culture where we do have our own symbols our own language and customs i put largely that is because of the dominant culture of autism that is still perpetuated basically what that person's post was doing it was still alienating those people from our positive culture. Um, I said, in social psychology, there is discussion of two methods to improve one situation where, when belonging to a stigmatized group. So like I just said, you distance yourself from the group by saying, I'm nothing like those other people with autism, or you more closely align with that group for autistic identity, benefiting from the psychological and material resources of the collective. But I mean, ultimately what I was trying to say was, you know, it's not your culture. You can't have a say in what symbols we use, in what language we use, um, and things like this. They haven't replied, so I'm hoping, oh, have they? When we first started chatting together, you said something to me about, you know, it was about, about coming out. Hi, 
I'm awesomely autistic, yeah? And what some people's responses would be, would be based upon. And that I have to and have done acknowledge the fact that their response um, is built upon their knowledge and understanding. I mean, that goes the same for so many families I know, individuals I know, who are awesomely autistic as well. Because if you're just fed, you know, what it means to be autistic in a particular way, that's the only knowledge you know. And what I think, again, this pandemic has given us, with all this live Zoom teams et al, is an ability for people to realise there is so much more. So I think that's benefited the change in, in <coughs> identity and understanding as well. Because people only ever thought or only ever told there was the puzzle piece. Now they know there is, there's so much more. Yeah, and I think that's been really important as well. That meant a lot to me when you said that, because when I've had interested responses, I've gone, well, that person's response is based upon what they know and what they understand. And they're on a journey almost just as much as I am. I think actually to, um, to take the unity idea further with, especially along the culture lines, um, we need to be encouraging people to partake in and explore autistic culture the same way they would explore Chinese culture or, you know, uh, Indian culture. You know, like the way people experience world cultures, we should be encouraging neurotypical people to step into our world and say, hey, uh, and I know you do this a bit when you do your talks, Chloe, you, you get people to try experiment with stimming and, and see, you know, we, we need people to explore our culture as it is which is a a real cultural phenomenon you know we need people to recognize that it is a legitimate culture and that you know it's okay if they want to explore and partake in that culture alongside us because if anything it's just going to help them understand mm. the world from our view a little bit better now that there is something to be said about getting into the risks of people appropriating culture but I think in the case of autistic culture, it would be very difficult to appropriate our culture without actually benefiting us. Um, you know, because I know I've seen a lot of people, I saw a lot of debate about, oh, you know, all these non-autistic people buying weighted blankets, you know, it's appropriating our culture. And I, one of my main arguments to that was, yeah, but actually when the demand for weighted blankets goes up, the cost of them comes down and they were traditionally a very expensive, mm. you know, item. It's a bit where you, you, you tweak the environment, yeah, where you get rid of the flashy lights, the banging cupboard doors and all the rest of it. You know, you often get a lot of individuals saying, actually, you know, it's actually much better, isn't it? I said, you know, like shopping, it's really loud in here, but now you, you know, you've reduced the, the overload. Actually, I like it. And I didn't, I had issues with, with overload. So often when, I, when, when I've seen, you know, um, the redesign of environments, for example, take place, I've seen everybody almost go, hey, this is a lot better. No, I get it. God, yeah, I didn't realise these tellies were so loud, but they were, weren't they? That kind of stuff, yeah? And that is and almost I, understanding our culture. Really. I think there is a need to make sure that there is that balance between, you like say, not it becoming appropriation of a culture, because that is really problematic and not really acceptable. I think what's interesting is it's quite difficult to appropriate our experiences because fundamentally we process the world differently so yeah. there's we're always going to have that element that non-autistic people cannot experience but like you say there is definitely hopefully ways we can get them to try and cognitively understand that and empathize with that and then that means that we're more likely <clears throat> to be understood accepted embraced um and all this kind of stuff so i think yeah, like you say, that is important. So the, the amount of times that I do, it's Annette's um, um, tool, she's very creative, which is getting non-autistic people to do mindful stimming. They do not experience that in any way near or close to the way an autistic person does, but it definitely gives them an insight to go, right, I get it, I get why it's important even though they're never going to have the same qualitative experience as an autistic person doing that activity. So, yeah, I think I, I like yeah what you said, David, which is getting people to understand it then. So maybe a better term than Aut Autism Acceptance Month should be Autism Celebration Month. You know, oh, celebrate right. autistic people. So that people. was my last point, because I've got the, the notes for us, which was awareness, acceptance, appreciation, unity, and then I put pride. 
I think we need to get to a place where we are allowed to be proud to be autistic, no matter how difficult that might be for some of us, um, to be proud of literally just who we are, not in relation to a non-autistic world. I think it's important, though, to see the distinction between other people celebrating us and, and us having pride, because obviously autistic pride day has existed for some time now and that's i think is it june 18th yeah. or something is, yeah yeah um I, i'm not great with dates um uh yeah so june 18th is autistic pride day and autistic people have been celebrating that for a while um but i i really think and i don't know maybe it's pompous of me but i i genuinely think that it would be nice for neurotypical people to actually celebrate what autistic people bring to them for a bit because we we've done a lot for the world and you know all we've really been rewarded with it for is a bunch of stereotypes so we'll keep pride for ourselves as a as a thing to bring us together as autistic people and so really what you want to move away from then is or create instead is autistic acceptance uh, celebration month just celebrating us yeah and can that and be in a really autistic friendly way obviously i don't want like party poppers in my face <laughs> yeah but especially because i think celebrating autistic people is about as far away from the tragedy narrative that you can get like you know because that I think that's where people have the problem with awareness. So much of it follows that tragedy narrative. Oh, look how hard life is. You know, they're never going to do this. They're never going to do that. They, oh, what a shame. They're going to need carers their entire life. You know, and, and that's the narrative that is sold through awareness. If we change that from, you know, we move from awareness into acceptance and from acceptance, we move towards celebration we're then finally in a place where people are actually saying, hey, look, it's not all a tragedy. Yes, there are struggles, but look at all these good things. I And I still hope and think that the thing that's going to push us to that place, autistic and non-autistic people alike, is, like I say, moving away from pathology and thinking of us as a group of people, a population of people who do, do experience the world differently as a culture, as a minority, and still, yes, as a disabled minority. I think moving away, I think that will be the thing that will push us into more about celebrating us and, and appreciating us as we are, as opposed to still focusing on this idea that we have autism spectrum disorder. I think that's hopefully going to be the biggest thing, the biggest change that I think is coming. Yeah. Mostly because I keep pushing for it and writing about it. <laughs> Any final thoughts on Autism Awareness Month? Yeah, looking forward to when it's not called that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I look forward to hopefully seeing this shift in attitude continue year on year to when we get to a place where we can actually call it Autism Celebration Month. Have you celebrated your autistic person in your life? That is one of my favourites, actually. Um, uh, it's like that meme. Um, I think it is autism acceptance. Have you accepted an autistic person into your life? If you haven't done so by the end of, like, April, then you won't be on the... What is it? The, the gay commune spaceship or something have you seen this it's amazing i'll get a jessica can you cut this little bit out until i actually find the post so i don't just sound like a waffling meandering autistic person whilst we're on bits that are going to be cut out um, <clears throat> very good at her editing skills as well um, and so, like I say, my favourite, um, or one of my favourite, there's loads of memes that I love. I've just got a, a folder on my phone that's just full of memes um, that I actually think I should just have a folder on Academy for autistic memes because they're really useful for people to just be like, okay, have some education mm. in a really easy format. 
Um, okay, so a reminder that Autism Acceptance, Acceptance Month starts tomorrow. If you are not accepted by an autistic person by April the 30th, you will be left behind when we depart on the rockets to our neurodivergent, fully automated luxury gay space commune. <laughs> That's fantastic. I love it. it is. It's one of my favourites. And that is the point. Maybe we should look at it that way. It's <laughs> Autistic Acceptance Month. Have you, as a non-autistic person, been accepted by an autistic person? We could reframe it that way. We could. I like that. All about reframing, yeah. Exactly. Oh, this is lovely. So, um, thank you. This has been Academy. I have been Chloe Farahar with my co-presenters, David Gray Hammond and Tigger Pritchard. Yay! And Oogle. <laughs>